Hi, I'm Yvette Craddock and you are tuned into Frame. If you are looking for arts and cultural events in Eastern Iowa, then you need to know about ICA. You can think of it as your 24-7, 365 cultural concierge. And with me today on this show is its executive director to tell us more about the organization and arts in our community. Welcome to Frame, Abby Belain. Thank you very much. So much. It's nice to be here. Oh, it's lovely to have you. You've been so involved in the community from the get. You've been for, here for how long now? Almost a year now. A year, yeah. and you've done a lot. So let's introduce for those viewers who aren't aware of the organization, uh, what it is, mm -hmm what you do and how they can access everything arts in Eastern Iowa. Absolutely, well the organization is ICA as you said, which is the acronym for Iowa Cultural Corridor Alliance. And what we are is ultimately the Arts Alliance of East Central Iowa. Okay. So we work to promote the varied cultural opportunities of our partner organizations and to nurture what we call a sustainable cultural community. Okay, what does that mean? Exactly, <laughs> so let's, let's break it down. First okay. off, we work with about 150 cultural organizations in the area, what we call the corridor. So that's right. a word that you'll hear a lot. We consider that Lynn Johnson in the nine adjacent counties. So we are okay. a really a regional organization. Wonderful. So breaking down the mission, first right. off, um, so looking at um, letting people know about what's going on. So we have our website, which is culturalcorridor.org. And it's mobile friendly. Absolutely, it's mobile, mobile friendly, friendly as of March, which we're very excited about, Yay. yes. Okay. Um, so that's a space where all of our organizations have a, a small page about themselves, but then also they can put all of their different events and the things that are going on in their specific organization. Wonderful. From there, we take them and we put them on Facebook, Twitter, other social media sites, and also write about them in um, publications, talk on the radio, talk on television, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, all different things. So it's really a great way to let people know what's going on with regards to arts and culture in the area. Great. Yeah. So name some events that are coming up for Q3 and Q4. Oh my goodness, there's so many. There's know, over 3,000 There's over 3, events on the site right now. So there are multiple events to, to participate in every day of the year. There sure are. Right now, you know, we've got the Freedom Festival going on up in Cedar Rapids. Um, coming, coming in August, we're talking about Landlock Film Festival. That's um, very good. Yes, we've got so many different things that are coming up. Um, it's hard just to name a few. So you have the performing arts, yes. the visual arts. Yes. What else? Am I missing a category of arts programming that's well, available on sure. the site? Well, actually, we work with both nonprofit and for profit organizations. Okay. So, looking at the for profit organizations, we talk about art galleries, um, individual artists that, that are working in the corridor, you know, whether you um, work with ceramics, whether you're a painter, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, perform performing artists, presenting organizations. Um, pretty much all across the gamut. We even have a few nature centers that are involved with us. Which nature is our, and a lot of uh, inspiration comes from nature. Absolutely. So it's, it's, everything is well-rounded. Yes. Let's talk about the partners. How sure. can people be involved with ICA? Absolutely. So. Um, First off, ICA is a free resource to the community, and so we're trying to get out there and spread the word about all these great things that are going on. I always tell people, I'm like, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to tell you what's there, um, push, pushing people towards the partners. Um, okay. They can get involved by, first off, going to an event, um, checking out our website and seeing what's going on. And, and I always, you know, when, when it was the beginning of the year, I'd say, for your New Year's resolution, don't talk about going to the gym every day because you know it's never going to happen. <laughs> so pick a sure. new organization off the site that, that you haven't heard of before and choose one event per month for, for the year. So 12 events, 12 new organizations, and have that be your, your resolution for the year. Try something new. You know, Andre Perry and I had that conversation yeah. and I shared with him, all you have to do is try. Mm -hmm. If it's for you, great. You've broadened your horizons. If it's not, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe another 
time, place, organization, but give it a try. And Absolutely. People are doing great things around here. I think people will be pleasantly surprised at the world-class talent here and exactly what's going on. So that's very, very cool. Absolutely. I always tell people, um, bring a buddy. So, yes. for example, I love choir music. I, uh -huh. I sing with a choir in the area. And so when I go to a choir concert, I tell one of my friends, hey, come with me. Just, you know, check it out. Right. Because that might not be something that they necessarily thought they'd be interested in, but it'd be surprising to see when they're done if they really enjoyed it. And perhaps if they like a different type of medium that I uh, don't know as much about, they can take me. Everyone, broaden your horizon. And, Absolutely. And reframe your perspective on the arts and life in itself. And I like the share button that exists mm -hmm. on social media <laughs> sites. It's always a good way to not only invite friends, but kind of nudge other people. Hey, mm -hmm. you might want to check that out. And it does work. It it's does. It's really effective. You know, it's surprising. Um, they've, they've done research before, and, and I don't have specific numbers to give you, but mm -hmm. when a friend mm -hmm. says, hey, you should check this out. This is something I'm interested in. Um, if someone like your friend says, oh, well, they said that might be good. So you'd be more likely to go to that than necessarily just looking at it through a list and saying, well, maybe, maybe not. Sure. But, but if you go, Abby, this is such a cool event, you can't miss it. I'd be like, you know what, Vet said I should do this, so maybe I should go check it out. And I might be very, very surprised at what I see. Well, I am banking on that. Yeah. All right, so you have partners, the free access to everybody who has access to the internet. Absolutely. And then what about volunteering and membership? Absolutely. Explain that to our viewers. Please. Absolutely. Well, volunteering is always a critical part of both, both nonprofit and for-profit entities. Um, having volunteers come and be a part of your organization is a great way to learn different skills and also meet new people. Absolutely. Um, all of our partners are always looking for volunteers and for interns if you're interested as well. Okay. Um, so if, they're in, if your viewers are interested in getting involved with an organization, not really sure which one to contact or where they might fit the best, mm -hmm. they can always give contact to me. Um, okay. They can give me a call, send me an email and say, you know what, this is something I'm interested in. I have a lot of people that are newer to the community come mm -hmm. and say, you know, I just moved here, I don't really know how to get involved, you know, what are some different steps to take. So definitely feel free to use me and, as I, and I as a resource okay um, and then also um, with regards yeah, to okay. membership membership so we call it member. we call it partnership so yes frame okay. frame is a partner of ours Yay. which we, we appreciate that thank you so much for accepting oh not a problem not a problem so so any organization or individual that is focused on arts and cultural programming such mm -hmm. as yourself mm -hmm. can join ICA okay. um, we are a partner based organization so that means that all of our partners pay dues each year and that gets them access first off to, to that website which is a lot of times the, the big one that everybody wants to be involved with this. How do I get an event on that calendar? Right. And it's and it's becoming a partner. Um, individual organizations that aren't a part of ICA can post. Um, it, there's a per event fee though for that. All right. But partnership gets you access to that website, gets you access to this network. And then also we provide professional development sessions for our partners as well. Which are very rich in content and, and highly recommended. They are. We've, we've really enjoyed them. We had an audience development session earlier this year. We've also had a best practices for engaging student mm -hmm. interns event too. So, And all of those um, topics are actually selected by our partners. We do surveys each year and say, you know, what are you interested in and allow them to submit ideas as well. Excellent. Yeah. So very engaging and interactive. Yeah. And as busy as you are, you are so responsive. I really appreciate <laughs> well, that. Well, thank so you. Definitely reach out, everyone. <laughs> now, let's talk about surveys. Uh huh. I have the copy, the latest copy of the American for the Arts, mm -hmm. Arts and Economic Prosperity Study, and we'll put this on the screen. Great. And and Ica is participating in the next study, study number four. We are. Let's talk about that because it's very, very important. Can you give us an overview of the study Absolutely. and the importance to our community? Well, we are so excited and simply delighted to be a part of this study again. We were a part of it five years ago. Um, the last numbers were um, surveyed in 2006 and were released in 2007. So right now we're surveying here in 2011 and we'll release the numbers in 2012. Okay. They do it every year, every five years. So what is important about this survey is that it's an arts and economic prosperity study. What that means is Americans for the Arts mm -hmm. connects with arts and cultural organizations like ICA around the United States and says, you know, we want to put a number, we want to put a figure on the value of um, arts and culture in the area, nonprofit arts and culture organizations. Um, and so we need, we need help in doing that. We need data. 
So what we do is over the course of 2011, we're collecting mm -hmm. over 800 patron surveys. We're going out to our partner organizations, mm -hmm. collecting surveys from people who are going to those nonprofit events. Right. The surveys asking information like, where are you from? Um, did you go out to dinner before this? How much money did you spend? How much was on tickets? Are you going to go out after? Um, did you stay in a hotel? Did you drive? Things uh, like that. Because yes. all of those different entities have a multiplier attached to them that are all partly connected to going to that theater performance or going and seeing that painting in, in the gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, I always try to do um, an example with people. So when you go to um, a show, say at the Englert Theater downtown, okay. say you're going to pay $15 or so for that ticket. So I have three tickets. Absolutely. Perfect. Right. So the other two people that you're bringing with you, did they come from out of town? Yes, we came from, we each came from a different part of the area. Absolutely. So they all had to drive. Yes. So part of that gas money they paid is because they were coming to number one, of course, see you, but also go to that show. Yes. Did you go out to dinner before you went to the show? Absolutely. Yep. So you spent a little bit of money there, probably had a drink we all maybe. Love to or, eat. Absolutely. Uh, yes. And and if you're like me, you're gonna go out for dessert afterwards too. We have to do that. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> you have to sandwich the show. It's good. <laughs> but all of those different things, um, all those different multipliers come in and are part of that economic impact of um, just going to that show. Same thing with yes, what you're seeing on the yes. stage. Um, the costumes, right. um, the the people that are that are performing, all of those different things have those multipliers. And so we're trying to put a number on on what that economic value is and saying, you know, arts and culture are great for an after five. It's a lovely quality of life thing, but we also provide um, economic impact to the area. Absolutely. So now what about the ranking of the stakes? That was a discussion that I attended that I hosted last fall of the fifty states. Mm -hmm. Iowa is number 42 mm -hmm. in per capita art spending, yep, correct? Yep, we are. But we had this offline conversation about the relevance of that number. Yep. Will you explain the relevance of that number, what it represents, and what we as citizens can do to change that potentially? Absolutely. So ultimately what it means is out of the 50 states, um, we are 42nd in the nation for how much money we spend per person on arts and culture related activities. Okay. So 42 out of 50, you look at that and say, well, that's not exactly good. And that's true. Um, you know, we're, we're down there compared to everybody else in, in, in the Midwest. We're last in the Midwestern area, so, oh, which is unfortunate. <laughs> no, we don't want to be last. We don't want to be last. No. But, but what, what we need to realize about this, organ, about this number is that, okay, every, every state has different, has different contexts with regards to um, arts and cultural commissions, arts and cultural mm -hmm. alliances, and mm -hmm. arts and cultural education. And so we need to understand that there are differences in that number and that right now, based upon everybody else, we're number 42. What can we do to, to increase that, to enhance that, right. is make arts and culture a priority. Um, right now in Iowa, we all talk about STEM, the science, technology, yes. Oh, yes. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, while that's important, we look at changing STEM into what I call STEAM. Actually, what, what all different people call STEAM. I went out right. to the Americans of the Arts National Conference, and they okay. had a turning STEM into STEAM conversation. I like and that. of course, the A is for arts. Mm -hmm. um, Make, making people aware that arts and culture is important and that creative mindset, something that you learn from being a part of arts, is, is a really, really critical part of, of what employers today want. Yes. So when I look at it, it's a, do you, do you want someone who can just do, you know, the two plus two is four, which is great. We all need to know that. I'm say, not saying that, that we shouldn't, but we also need to be able to say, okay, let's take this problem, let's turn it on its head and say, how can we look at this creatively and critically? And so. solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Yep. I and we had part of our offline conversation mm -hmm. was my my perspective on it. Mm -hmm. I think everything's important. The more artists I meet, mm -hmm. the clearer it becomes that art and science are interconnected. They are. The art can't take place without the science mm -hmm. in some cases, and the science can't take place without the art. Yep. So I, I really hope that people can start moving to the STEAM concept, mm -hmm. understanding that it's all very important, not only to the cultural impact, mm -hmm. but business, economic development, and just who we are as people. Absolutely. When I was at this conference that, that I referenced earlier, there was a professor there, Professor Ruth Bernstein, and he was speaking about um, the the um, sorry the um, sorry I'm totally off. No, it's okay. We can it caught me a little bit. Okay. <laughs> the pe the people talking or the people talking upstairs or whatever. No problem. Um, 
So when I was at the Americans for the Arts conference that I referenced earlier, Professor Ruth Bernstein, he's from Michigan, was talking about how arts and also those that win Nobel Peace Prizes are interconnected. And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so it's, you know, give me a little bit more about this research because I, right. I was a little bit, you know, okay, all right, that's fine. Um, well, he was showing us different types of examples, and the example that came up to me was um, they showed me a few paintings and said, this person won a Nobel Prize and gave the name of the person. And I was like, okay, that sounds fine. And he's like, and he was also a painter and showed the paintings, and I was like, well, that's very nice. It's fine. And he said, well, this person created penicillin. I said, well, that's interesting. And he goes, and the paint that you're looking at right now is actually from his Petri dishes. He had the bacteria in his Petri dishes grow, and it would grow different colors. That's what he would paint with. He was an artist on the side, but, but also was a scientist as well. And so, you know, think of it in a little bit, you know, it's kind of an off-kilter example, but that to me was really intriguing, how you bring together that creative mindset and also that scientific mindset, and they come together to form this very well-rounded person. I think there's more of that out there. There is. There are more people <laughs> who are left and right, yep. and so they might do something during the day, yep. and at night they have their side passion, if you will, mm -hmm. and I think we'll see more people emerging with the duality, yep. if you will, of their life, mm -hmm. which is going to be very exciting to see the contributions to society and how it enriches all of us, solves problems, mm -hmm. et cetera. Well, just, just regard, regarding the, the, contrib the contributions to society when you were talking about the arts and economic prosperity study, mm -hmm. the numbers from five years ago was that, was that arts and cultural nonprofit organizations in the corridor, again, that Lynn, Johnson, mm -hmm. and the nine adjacent counties, had an economic impact of over $68 million a year. It's a lot of money. And that was five years ago. I mean, we've changed a lot since then, of course, but um, that's a pretty big number, and that's something that we definitely shouldn't ignore and we should be proud of. No, and we should grow that. Yep. And we should be proud of it. Yep. Because we have so many, again, I will say, world-class, talented mm -hmm. people here. It's something that I hope that Iowans can celebrate more of because we've got it in our own backyard. Absolutely. So definitely everybody participate in some way. Mm -hmm. There is something else I wanted to chat with you about today, yep. and that is pursuing arts in your education. Yep. And a lot of times, and I've spoken to many people about this, they were told some at some point along the way growing up, well, artists don't make money. Why would you <laughs> want to do that? You need to do something safe. You need to be an accountant. Yep. You know, CPAs are always employable, doctors, engineers, et cetera, which every, everyone's mm -hmm. job and profession is important. So I'm not taking away from that. Right. But people tend to stuff their artistic and creative talents in order to do something safe or something that will generate a lot of income, mm -hmm. whatever that is, mm -hmm. perspective to their, their income desires. Yeah. Tell us. <laughs> tell us your experience about having arts education and the, all the different paths you can take mm -hmm. utilizing your arts education. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, my background, I guess, um, I started out saying, I want to be an arts administrator. That's what, what I wanted to do. I decided that when I was 18 years old and said, that's what I'm going to do. And my loving parents said, okay, <laughs> deep breath, okay, that we sounds good. You, yes, right? we support you, no matter what, no matter what happens. <laughs> So I went to Luther College and got a, a BA um, it, specifically in business management, but it was called a music management degree because I had a music minor um, and it focused on uh, you know, running those nonprofit organizations and, at some form. And so going directly out of undergrad, I wanted to look for that, that nonprofit arts and culture, arts administration job, and it was very difficult to find. Mm. And as, as you know, a young person, that was, that was very hard for me to say, okay, I'm going to have to go do something else but I know I'm going to come back to it at some point because I want to at least try that as a career path. So I went and I worked in the for-profit industry, industry for a while and actually I really enjoyed it. Did something completely different from arts and culture, um, had a great experience, but said, you know what, if I can take those experiences that I learned and bring them back to arts and culture, that, that, yeah. that arts administrator type role that I've always wanted to try, I'll be better for it. So um, went back to school, um, got into the Bull Center for Arts Administration at UW-Madison, okay. got my MBA. So again, it's a business degree, but it was focused in nonprofit management. All right. And then now I'm at ICA. And um, throughout the time that I was getting my degree, I worked in, at a theater in, in development, I worked at a symphony in marketing, and I managed a string quartet. Um, and, and now I'm here and I get to try that being an arts administrator and, and taking all of those experiences, those for-profit, those nonprofit experiences and saying, you know, even though I, I had my passion and had to go away from it for a while, I can still come back to it now. Um, I think it's definitely an ebb and flow. Uh, 
for those that get to do it their whole life, that's absolutely fantastic and, and you're one of the lucky few. But, but know that being an artist or being an arts administrator, that, that nonprofit doesn't necessarily mean no profit. So Absolutely, yeah. that's a misperception. Yep. I, I am an advocate of following your heart, following your passion. It will all work out. Yep. And sometimes there is the ebb and flow, and you have to step away in order to mm -hmm. come back. But I believe that every step takes you in the right direction mm -hmm. in life. So helps you to gain some it helps you to gain some perspective on on what you want. You know, getting getting all those different types of experiences. Absolutely. So, yep. What about trends in art? What are you seeing? Locally and then nationally and even internationally, because I know you're plugged in. I, I do my best to be plugged in. <laughs> so, um, you know, of course, one of the big trends is cutting costs in the sense of social media is that is that big thing right now, whether whether you tweet, whether you yes. post on your Facebook, um, whether you check in, whatever you do. Exactly. You you need to you need to be engaged if you're if you're an art arts person. That's a great way to engage with your fans mm -hmm. in a in a very unique way. Um, hopefully in, in a non-intrusive way. Um, whenever I speak with arts and culture organizations that are working with, the, with Facebook, I always say, this is a great place to talk about your performances and to, and to get a conversation started, but it's not necessarily a place to say, tickets, 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 buy it now. Right. Because it's a social, it's a safe space. For, yes. for individuals, yes. and if you continually become that, that advertisement, it, it may deter some people away from you. But, but it's right. a great way to save some money um, so that you can you know, use, those print, use that print media, et cetera. So. I really enjoy sites that give you the behind the scenes. Yes. All those special, somewhat VIP experience mm -hmm. through their social media sites. Mm -hmm. So that's something that organizations can think more about. Talking about that behind the scenes yes. portion of it, absolutely. What I'm starting to see with regards to arts audiences is that we're getting back into that mode of wanting to understand the artistic process a little bit more. So there was that time where we wanted to sit back and say, okay, I just want to be entertained. I want to come. I want to see a show. I want to leave. And, and that's great. Or I want to, you know, go see a museum, etc. That's great. Um, now we're getting into that point of, you know, I actually want to be a part of that talk back. I want to, you know, submit my own yeah. experiences, submit my photos, do all these different types of things, um, and and be a part of the action and really understand how it was created instead of just saying that was nice and and being done with it. So we're moving from passive participation into engagement. Engaged, exactly. Yep. So oh, those are some trends that I'm seeing. Yeah. What else, what other words of wisdom do you have for us? How, words how of we wisdom. continue to grow our cultural base here because we have it. And we, we do have it. Bring it out of the woods a little bit more. We, <laughs> we do have it. Um, definitely just become an engaged citizen of the corridor. That's what I would say. Try something new. Um, arts and culture, the word culture I think is somewhat scary to some people. And so, you know, it's in our name, Iowa Cultural Corridor Alliance, because right. culture can mean high art. It, it means those things that I might not understand if I don't have an arts degree, if I didn't go to school for arts or I didn't take you know, music lessons in any way, shape, or form. And it's not true. Culture, culture is, is a word that can ex explain you know, just an area, a group of people, a way of life, and, and a passion. And don't be afraid of things that might be cultural in nature because you might find something that you're really, really intrigued by. Um, a new way, you know, sure. taking a course. Um, oh, yeah, I, have, I have a friend that, that recently took, took dance lessons and was like, I totally don't want to do this, but, you know, my significant other wanted to do it, and so I'll do it. Absolutely enjoys dance now. Um, took a friend to a symphony um, performance when I when I worked there. Mm -hmm. um, didn't think he'd like symphony. Loved it. Now you know has you know student season tickets. So I mean it's it's a great opportunity to, to just get engaged. Just you know don't be a passive citizen. Definitely be a present one. Thank you for talking about culture because it's true. Some people yep. are very hesitant. And and frame is about. Mm -hmm demystifying arts and yep. culture and making it more accessible. And I ask the questions that people <laughs> might be thinking and they think, well, I can't ask that. I'll appear dumb. Oh, or, no. You know, just taking all those barriers yep. away so they can really enlighten themselves and others yep. around them, like mm -hmm. your experiences with your friends, encouraging each other to do things that are outside of their box, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
being an, being an engaged participant is, is the, the best way to do it and I think the most meaningful for, for you as well. Um, you know, if you don't know the best way to get started, use me as a resource. I mean, they can even use you as a resource um, to, you know, who should I talk to? What should I go see? I'm kind of interested in this, but I, I don't know the best time to go because I don't think that I'm going to fit in with this crowd. Arts and Culture is, is a great space and, and we're, we're a comfortable space. We're very accepting. So. Yes, this is very true. All yeah. can apply and all yes. are welcome. Yes. And yes, and if I don't know the answer, mm -hmm. I'm happy to do the legwork yep. to find the answer and mm -hmm. to help people get the information they need. Yep. I know with the ICA partners, everybody wants to share their story and explain to you what is unique about their organization and or them as an, and as an individual. And I've visited almost all of the ICA partners now. And my, in my first year, that was my goal, visit all 150 of them um, and sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk. Mm -hmm. um, and all of them have that unique selling proposition, what makes them so interesting and so different from every other partner. Um, and they all love working together, of course, and collaborating, which is, is definitely something that we need in this mm. economic time. Mm -hmm. um, but they're all so unique, and it just it makes my job a joy because I get to work with all these great people and these great organizations. It, because it doesn't appear like work at that it's point. Not. It's not. <laughs> it's it's, like, it's so the it's, in the world. <laughs> it's it's fabulous. I mean to ICA is a wonderful organization. I have a fabulous board um, that the ICA board just works so hard and and to spread the good news about arts and culture in the corridor and so everyone's very dedicated and we encourage all of you to become dedicated mm -hmm. to the cultural cause in eastern Iowa. So Yep. Well, thank you so much for your time and your insights. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. You are so welcome. And thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Frame. Check out Ica's website and become engaged.